What is going on everyone? In this video, I'm gonna walk you guys through the positive EV page on Outlier. I'm gonna show you guys how I personally find positive expected values using their page. There's a lot of different filters that you can use on Outlier. So I'll walk you through what each filter means and just explain it along the way. And I'll also set up um, exactly how I have my filter set up to find the best positive EV plays. If you're not sure what positive EV betting is, uh, I'll give you a quick little breakdown of it. We're basically taking the majority of the book's opinion on what a line should be priced at and then using that majority opinion against other books to find outliers in the market. So essentially, if nine out of 10 books agree that a price for a game should be a certain price and there is one book that is just showing insane value compared to those, you know, the majority of the books, then we basically just bet it on the outlier book and long term, you'll should make money and find value on a lot of your bets. So let's go into the filter page right here. We'll start with the DVIG book. So there's multiple books you can select from, which is, this is basically um, what book you are going to use as the source of truth. Um, so basically the best thing to do is start with Pinnacle because they are the sharpest sports book in the world. So I always recommend starting there, especially on main lines where um, Pinnacle can take a very high amount of limits. That means um, a lot of people are betting into them, which makes their lines more sharp. So I always start with Pinnacle, especially with main lines. If you start getting into player props, we can start devigging with different books. But um, a devig with Pinnacle, they, it's set as the default, default, and it's basically the bread and butter of positive EV sports betting. So we'll go into the devig method. Um, VIG is just the tax that the books charge. You often see minus 110 uh, versus minus 110 line. It's because there's VIG in that market. If the books weren't charging VIG, their odds would just be plus 100 on both sides and giving you even money. But they have to make um, some type of profit, so they add VIG. So basically, the DVIG method is there's multiple methods to remove that tax. Uh, the default is the multiplicative. It's the most commonly used across the board. Uh, that's typically what I leave it at. Sometimes I'll use the additive, but you don't really need to worry about the shin and power method unless you are playing like a ton of long shots, like plus 100 odds, I mean, plus uh, 1000 odds or big favorites um, also in that range. So we'll go over to the Kelly multiplier here and the Kelly, multi, uh, the Kelly criteria is what this is based off of. And it's just a formula that uses your implied win probability and your expected value for a bet to come up with an optimal bet size, essentially. So this is basically just how aggressive you want to be with your bet sizing. Um, it's defaulted to a full Kelly, which I don't typically recommend. So I would knock this down to a half Kelly. And if you want to be even more conservative, a lot of people start at um, one quarter Kelly. So I'm going to have this set to one half Kelly. And we'll go to the next filter tool, which is the EV percentage. So you can set a minimum EV percentage. Um, if you only want to see plays with, you know, 3% EV and up, you can do that. Um, I will bet plays down to 1%. So I'm going to put my minimum EV at 1%. Here is the Kelly percentage. So this is just the percent of the bankroll um, you're willing to bet. So if you don't want to bet less than 1% of your bankroll, it'll filter out all the plays that aren't um, recommending you bet that much, but I will leave this at zero because I will bet any amount of money. It doesn't really matter. As long as there's value, it's good to go. So VIG, we talked about that earlier. That's basically what the tax, um, the books charge for tax. Typically main lines you see between four and 5% VIG. So if you left this VIG percentage to just below, you know, 5.5, you're going to see a lot of money lines, a lot of spreads. Uh, you're not going to see too many alternate markets, things like that. Uh, I like to keep the VIG all the way up. I don't really care how much VIG there is in the market. As long as I can find value, I'll bet it. So let's hop over to the next filter. We have the no VIG odds. And this is just the um, fair value of a line. So like I said, we used Pinnacle as our DV, DVIG book. Once we remove the VIG, um, if those odds or that fair value falls into this range, it'll pop up on our uh, filter settings. So I will bet down to any amount leave it at i think it goes down to minus 505 and i typically start my searches in the plus uh, below plus 200 odds it just reduces your variance if you're betting long shots if you're betting a ton of long shots your variance is going to be all over the place even if they're positive ev bets you could have massive downswings so i typically start my searches at plus 200 or below 
if I'm not finding a lot of bets, I will bump that up. But let's go into bet types. There are a few different bet types we have here. Game lines, player props, team props, and game props. Like I said, we are going to uh, use Pinnacle as a DVIG book, and they are extremely sharp on game lines. So like I said, this is the bread and butter of EV betting. You take Pinnacle, you DVIG it against um, some major markets like game lines, and you'll have a great uh, results long term. And then the date range, this is kind of important too, because lines are typically the sharpest within you know the, the day of a game. So uh, you can find value a week or two out from an event, but if you're trying to be safe, I would typically just put this on in the next 24 hours so you're finding only current events. So those are all my filters. Um, you can actually save your filter results, so I won't have to go through that every single time. I already have it saved. Um, the other cool thing up here is you can select what books you have and what you want to filter for. So I have them all toggled on so it shows me every bet. So let's just look at this first one here. We have a first half over uh, 82.5 in this WNBA game. And we have a 3.47% EV, which is great. Uh, the Kelly percent of my bankroll is saying to bet 1.91%. Uh, this VIG is close to 5%. The no VIG odds, minus 118. So that's also the fair value. And we're getting this bet at minus 110 on FanDuel. So basically, this line on FanDuel is good up to minus 118. Obviously, if I open up FanDuel and now they're priced at minus 115, uh, you know, my EV is going to be a lot lower, but it's still a good bet. So I will bet this probably up to minus 115. But let's look into this bet a little further. Right here, it shows all of the DVIG methods. Uh, in my filters, we DVIG using the multiplicative. And this is actually pretty nice because the multiplicative is actually showing the most conservative EV percentage. Um, the other methods are showing a little more. Sometimes I like to just look at the lowest number here and kind of use that as, you know, the safest uh, EV to assume the bet is. So if we go to DVIG odds, we obviously use Pinnacle to DVIG, and they have this line at minus 132 and the other side of the line at plus 108. So it's really easy to add it to your bet slip. You can go over to ads, add bets. Uh, I had this old bet in here. And we found this one on FanDuel. So I can just add it right into my bet slip. It's actually going to open up FanDuel for me and put it right in my slip. I'm not logged in right now, but simply I would type in my wager, let's say $100, place the bet, and I would be done. So it is extremely quick to get your bets in, and that is very, very important when you're positive EV betting because these out are outliers in the market, and FanDuel will realize that they need to move their odds if um, they are way off from Pinnacle. So this bet might only be available for another 5-10 minutes. So to be able to get into the bet slip and place the bet as quick as possible, um, you're just going to get more profits and you're not going to miss as many bets if you're quick with it. So I hope you guys like this video. Um, if you're unfamiliar with some of the terms I used, like the Kelly multiplier, um, the VIG, uh, EV percentages, and things like that, we have a bunch of educational videos explaining to uh, you guys exactly what all this stuff really means in further detail. And I'll recommend just do your research before you go start placing bets. I know you guys are going to, you know, see this page and see all these great bets pop up, but make sure you do your due diligence first and understand what you're actually doing. Um, I never really recommend anyone placing a bet without some type of education on why they're making that bet. Obviously, if you're just doing it for fun, you can do whatever you want, but positive EV betting should be viewed as kind of a way to make money. It's kind of a part-time job for me. So I view it pretty seriously and I try to learn something new every day about it. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you liked this video. Uh, continue to learn and let's go make some